and welcome to YouTube channel Health Cube, the place where our mission is to not only motivate you but help you to move on to the brighter side of the health. In today's video, I'm going to simplify spina bifida for you, which means I'm going to explain you what exactly is spina bifida condition, to whom all it will affect, what all would be the symptoms of it, and how it is managed. This video would be helpful for someone whose child is suffering from spina bifida or else if your friend or some family member is having this problem. So if the term spina bifida is new for you and if you want to understand it more, make sure to watch this video till the end. Let's begin. Hello friends, I am physiotherapist Meghna Dave, founder of HealthQ Rehab, a neuro rehabilitation physiotherapist and a YouTuber. So today I will simplify spina bifida problem for you. So this video is not a very technical video but I will try to make it as simple as possible so that you can understand the problem in general and then you can logically understand how the treatment of this problem is addressed. So let me begin with making you understand what exactly is spina bifida. So spina bifida is basically a neurological disorder or else it's a birth defect which affects the central nervous system. Now, in central nervous system is comprised of three areas. We have our brain, we have our spinal cord and then we have our nerves which forms the peripheral nervous system, right? Now in spina bifida what happens is as we are uh, developing in the womb of the mother due to some problem the spinal cord which is the cord or else the tail kind of structure which starts from the bottom of your brain and which then branches out into the nerves, right? This is starting from the base of your skull and is going till your tail level, okay. Now in this area, this spinal cord needs to be protected. Its membrane needs to be protected and this protection is provided by the vertebral column or the vertebral bones and skin, muscles and structures like this. Now due to some problem, what happens is this spinal cord is not 100% covered with the protective structures which would be bone, which would be a tissue, which would be a muscle, which would be a skin etc. This happens due to some defect due to which when a child is born with spina bifida he will have an opening or else that lower part of the spinal cord or spinal column is quite exposed to the surrounding. To what extent it is exposed varies from child to child. It's not necessary that all spinal column uh, defect or spina bifida has completely exposed spinal cord. Some have very much exposed spinal cord and some have very mild. It would be seen in a form of a small dimple only. So it varies. Now this spina bifida is a condition when this is formed. Now the spina bifida can be a mild, a moderate or else a severe form of spina bifida and in medical terms it is named in three formats. Number one term is spina bifida occulta. The second type of spina bifida is called as meningocele and the third form of spina bifida is called as myeliomeningocele. Now these are the three different types of spina bifida problem that can exist. Now, the first one, the spina bifida occulta, is a relatively milder form. It is not that dangerous, not that problematic, but the other two ones are kind of little more severe and is a cystic form, which means there are kind of a tight knots also of the spinal cord is found in this problem. Now, the commonest area where the spina bifida is found is lower back region. Now as the name suggests spina, spina means at the spine and bifida is incomplete development, right? So this is found in the spine, the commonest is the lower end of the spine, okay, lower back region. But rarely it could be found in the upper back region as well as in cervical region as well, but it is very rare scenario. Now as I mentioned spina bifida occulta, the most simplest form of or else the most mildest form of spina bifida has mild symptoms. There won't be much symptoms seen in the child. Usually a physician or as a doctor or its parent will find some hairy patch present in the spina bifida area. Next, usually there could be a dimple or as a dark spot present in this area as well. And sometimes there could be a swelling or as a lump sort of thing observed 
at the location of the spina bifida in the spine. When these are the characteristics, then it would be called a spina bifida occulta. Now moving on to the next type of spina bifida, which is called as meningocele. Now even in meningocele, the problems are milder, not that severe. But what happens is there is a sac of fluid that is present at the spine where there is no membrane or is no protective area seen due to which a very big lump would be observed to the parent or else to the doctor in the back of the spine of the child. This fluid basically tries to protect the spinal cord which is exposed. And the third one, the myelomeningocele, is a severe form of spina bifida where the symptoms would be more. This is basically an open spina bifida, which means there is no covering to the spinal cord. The tight structures, the spinal cord structures are completely exposed. In this scenario, the child will have poor ability to walk. He will have impaired bowel and bladder symptoms. There would be accumulation of fluid in the brain because the cerebrospinal fluid is not kind of circulating in a proper way so there would be a lot of accumulation of the fluid that will happen which could lead to other complication which is called as hydrocephalus there would be thetoid spinal cord which means the spinal cord structures would be open hence it would be very high at risk of injuries as well as these children would be at the risk of latex allergy now you must be wondering why this problem happened to the child at first place now mostly this problem happens due to genetic causes. Yes, if there are some genetic defect, then the chances of spina bifida happening is more. If a parent have a child who has got history of spina bifida, then there are 4% chance that the second child will also have spina bifida. Mothers who have folate deficiency or vitamin and B9 deficiency during pregnancy are also at risk of getting or developing spina bifida. Number three, if the mothers are on anti-seizure medication, anti-convulsion medication during pregnancy, then also it increases the risk of development of spina bifida in the child. If mother is obese, or if mother has a habit of a lot of alcohol consumption during pregnancy, then also it puts the child at risk of developing spina bifida. And last but not the least, if the mother is having a poorly controlled diabetes mellitus, then also the child is at risk of developing spina bifida. So these are the risk factors. So if we have to prevent spina bifida, mother's health has to be taken into consideration. If mother's health is good, then the chances of developing spina bifida would be rare. But if there are some genetic defects, nothing can be done and child still can develop spina bifida problem. So prevention is the key where you can give good amount of folate content or folate supplements to the mother during pregnancy, avoiding smoking, alcohol consumption during pregnancy, avoiding sugar, uh, uh, maintaining blood sugar levels under normal during pregnancy are some of the easiest ways with which spina bifida can be prevented. Now, you must be wondering what is the solution to this problem if the child is born with it. But before that, let me tell you some of the key symptoms that a child might have. Now, as I mentioned, the spina bifida would be mild, moderate, severe. In the mildest form, there won't be much of the symptoms. Child will live almost near normal life without any impairments. But child might have latex allergy due to which using of rubber gloves, um, plastic items could cause allergies to the children. So that has to be taken into consideration. Now, apart from that, as the severity increases, the child's physical limitation starts coming more. So child will have very high risk of developing brain infections child will have problem with physical abilities which means the spine would be weak the legs would be weak there would be very limited bowel and bladder control and in some situation if the child's cerebrospinal fluid is more it could lead to hydrocephalus which is again a very severe condition which requires surgical management so some of the key uh, signs that a parent must look at is presence of hairy patch in the back of the child, presence of dimple in the back of the child, presence of swelling or a slump in the lower back area. If child is showing some orthopedic abnormalities, which means the legs 
or spine is not developed well then you should check that bowel and bladder disorders should be checked if the child is getting repeated urinary tract infection if the child is showing poor kidney function if child is having pressure sores if child shows skin irritation and if child shows abnormal eye movements then these are some warning signs that it could be because of spina bifida and it requires examination now when you will go to doctor your doctor will take proper history and after that some diagnostic test would be prescribed these diagnostic tests would be blood test scans ultrasonography and before birth afp test would be suggested to identify or detect spina bifida early on so this makes a proper diagnosis of spina bifida with the help of doctor's skill set and diagnostic procedure now comes the management part so mostly the management is surgical surgically this problem can be rectified to an extent and depending on the severity the treatments are given now mostly as i mentioned surgery is the option and doctors determine the severity of the spina bifida the age of the child and overall health of the child in considering surgery apart from surgery medical management is done with on the basis of the symptoms that the child is showing and on the rehab part post surgery or pre surgery physiotherapy plays a very crucial role in making the child physically independent improving the flexibility of the muscle and making the muscle strong as possible so rehabilitation definitely plays a very crucial role in improving the quality of life of the child and helping child to achieve the developmental milestone which he might lack on or else gets impaired due to the problem of spina bifida and that's the reason it's important that you should seek physiotherapy help if your child is suffering from spina bifida so friends on this video i tried to simplify it as much as possible to make you understand what exactly is spina bifida i hope you find this video helpful if yes definitely make sure to like this video share this video with your friends and family members and do not forget to subscribe to health q channel i'll see you in another video thank you